So the devices are pretty much, as far as I can see, already order a bowl if you want it right now. So this is the Apple Watch Series 8, iPhone 14, and then you have iPhone 14 Pro. So as I said, I'm buying an iPhone 14 Pro. Now, they've gotten rid of the eSIMs, so that means that taking one of these phones overseas means... I guess they'll just have to use your IME number and um, whatever other number they need. So what is this? The Pro Max iPhone 14. And then I'm going to get... I'm going to try the Deep Purple because that's the new color. And then it's one terabyte of storage. Apple trade-in. No, I'm not trading in anything, so no trade-in. Uh, buy uh, or finance. Pay the total amount today. Yeah, so the devices are pretty much, as far as I can see, already order a bowl if you want it right now. So this is the Apple Watch Series 8, iPhone 14, and then you have iPhone 14 Pro. So as I said, I'm buying an iPhone 14 Pro. Now, they've gotten rid of the eSIMs, so that means that taking one of these phones overseas means... I guess they'll just have to use your IME number and um, whatever other number they need. So what is this? The Pro Max iPhone 14. And then I'm going to get... I'm going to try the Deep Purple because that's the new color. And then it's one terabyte of storage. Apple trade-in. No, I'm not trading in anything, so no trade-in. Uh, buy uh, or finance. Pay the total amount today. Yeah. So what you're actually watching right now is you're actually watching me editing a video on my iPhone in order to take that video and upload it to YouTube. And therein lies the reason why I am so willing to spend the money that I spend on iPhone because I use it specifically in order to help make my YouTube videos. So my iPhone doubles as not just a phone, but it becomes a productivity center as if I was using it for uh, making movies, like as if I had an iMac or, a, or one of those uh, Mac laptops. So it's actually pretty interesting that you can actually watch the process. The way that they've created iMovie, they've made it so easy to use until it's a perfect system. Like, it's an absolute perfect system, and I just love using it. Now, as I said, I'm going to take my old phone, and I'm going to hand it to... I'm going to hand me down my last phone to my mother. I'm going to take my mother's phone. I'm going to hand me down that to my father. And uh, this way, nothing goes unused. And uh, the beautiful thing about that is what will end up happening is I'll have an odd number phone that's just sitting around. And I can always use that just in case I need a second video recorder. Because, you know, some people use GoPros, but I actually prefer to just keep using iOS devices because they have fully featured technology. Like they can share videos with each other and they can do um, all of the stuff that I'd want them to do. So, um I, li I like the fact that, you know, on Wi-Fi, an iPhone that's old, even if it doesn't have a SIM card, as long as you're on Wi-Fi, it's more efficient and it's easier to use than, say, an iPod, and you can do so much with it. Um, but uh, ultimately, as you can see, this phone is costing me fifteen ninety nine. Now, some people said that there is no price hike, but I can clearly see that something's higher because with tax, this comes out to $1,750. So the last time I bought one of these phones, it didn't come out to $1,700 even. But you know what? I'm not even worried about it because I want it and I, I, I just have to have it. So I just want it. So the price doesn't even matter. That's irrelevant. But um, that's what it is. So um, I'm really excited. I have ordered the Deep Purple 1 terabyte. And as you can see, that's $1,599. And I'm buying it on my Apple card, and I'm just going to pay it off in order to protect my credit scores and everything.
but that's just it. So this is my iMovie uh, editing software. Um, you know, anybody who has an iPhone, for the most part, I think you have this now. But I, I make so much use of this, especially for my YouTube. It's, it's the easiest thing. It's the best. It's efficient. Samsung phones do not have this. They have video editors, but they don't have anything as coherent and as efficient as iMovie. When it comes to stringing together a four or five or six hour movie made of multiple clips and adding in basic effects or, um, or even trimming and all that stuff, they don't have anything that even remotely touches iMovie. And that's one of the reasons, well, that's one of the main reasons I continue buying iPhone. And that's just it. So people keep on trying to say that Apple didn't innovate. One thing I do have to point out is that the iPhone 14 is basically the iPhone 13 with a slightly different um, hardware revision. The iPhone 15 is going to be all new. And the iPhone 16 will be just a 15 with a hardware revision. We all know that that's how they do it by now. Because they've been doing... I think they kind of stopped with the S versions uh, back during... Um, I, I don't think there was an 8S. I think there was an iPhone 7. And if I'm not mistaken, there was an iPhone 7S. But after that, they went to the 8 and then they went to the X. They skipped the 9. But... Um, People can say whatever they want about Apple, but the reality is Apple's got people logged into their computer right now spending $800 for that new Apple Watch, and they got people in there right now who are dropping over $1,000 right now for iPhone 14. They want it. Regardless what you have to say, regardless what you think is innovative, regardless you and your, your, your clamshell case, makeup case phones, nobody cares. They want this, and they're going to get it, too. As far as those people go who say Apple doesn't innovate anything, let me just say that one of the things that's a clear uh, debunking of that nonsense is the fact that there's no longer lines like this. The last time I ever had to wait online for an iPhone was way back during the release of the iPhone 6 Plus when they got the larger screen. That was the only time that I ever had to wait overnight for anything. Now, since then, we've seen graphics cards, PlayStation 5s, Xboxes, and other things forcing people to wait on these lines. And many times you've had violence on those lines. You've had people robbing other people. Obviously, there were people who were there to buy as much as they could so that they could scalp these products. Apple single-handedly eliminated the scalping process by forcing you to pre-order the phones, limiting you to two orders, and then forcing you to show up, provide ID, and by keeping digital records of everything, by letting you order these things with an Apple card credit card. So I haven't had to wait online since, again, the iPhone 6 Plus, and that was many, many, many years ago. Uh, iPhone 7, from what I remember, had the beginnings of the pre-order process. And Apple claimed that they did it just because they were afraid that there could be a terrorist act on one of these lines. And considering how violent America is, where you've got people doing random acts of violence, um, you know, Apple killed it. They basically made it so scalping was damn near impossible. And they also made it so that you didn't have to wait on these lines. The day of, I'm going to make another video where I'm gonna walk into the store I'm going to videotape picking up the phone. I'm not going to have any problems whatsoever. Uh, the pre-order process did not allow me to pick the store that I want to get it from. But what I'm going to do is obviously pick the store that's nearest me. And I'm going to get it on my way home when it is released. And again, they've made it very simple, very easy, and very safe. Why hasn't Xbox done that? Why hasn't Sony done that? Why hasn't GameStop done that? Why hasn't NVIDIA done that? Why hasn't AMD done that? And that's the reason why Apple's a $3 trillion company and they're not.